Hey folks, uh, welcome back to the Bat of Doom track. Uh, we're continuing our morning program of uh, the technical program. And um, this talk is uh, by Tony is uh, kind of an interesting talk. Um, I, I was particularly interested to see it when the, the, CF, the call for CFP came in, um, as were the other uh, reviewers. And um, part of the interesting thing about this is um, we noticed in the bio that, uh, that Tony's bio is really short. If you haven't read it, you should go to the website and read it. Um, but it, it more or less says, uh, I am 13 years old, and uh, there's not much else to write here because I am 13 years old. Uh, but he's a hacker and a small human, and uh, he's gonna tell us about um, some experiences he's had with a tool that's known as uh, Bash Bunny. And with that, I'll hand it over to Tony. All right, thank All right. you. So we'll start with my introduction. So I'm Anthony, I'm 13, and as I am 13, I am unemployed, and job offers are welcome. Um, I like Kali Linux, because it's just like any other version of Linux, but has all the tools. I like food, because it tastes good, and it's necessary. So what is the Bash Bunny? I have, a, I have it right here, if you can see that. But it's just a small computer and it runs a version of Linux where you download a text file onto it. When the, the switch here is in the first position, you can plug into your computer and it works just as a regular USB. And you download text files into one of the two payload folders and you unmount it and then you can switch to either one of those two. And when it is plugged in, it boots it up and runs the payload that is in that folder. So then the rubber ducky, it's a little USB, a lot smaller. It's like this. And it just acts as a keyboard and you can program keystrokes into a little SD card it has. And when that is plugged into a computer, it just runs it. So tack modes, that is the first thing you have to put into the code for it to run. It determines how it's attacking and where and what the USB is acting as. So the, as you can see, there's a table and the different attack modes are serial, AMC Ethernet, RNDIS, Ethernet, storage, HID, and off. And they act either as a serial console, Ethernet adapter, a uh, different Ethernet adapter, a flash drive, or a keystroke injection. This one will be focusing on the HID, and that just makes it act like the rubber ducky. <clears throat> um, this morning attack modes, and this is a little example. So you just put in all caps at the top, and then any code that you want to run just goes below it, and this would be with the HID attack mode, which uses the ducky script. So the scripting language, it has its own language. And when you use the HID attack mode, you use mainly the rubber ducky language. You can use bash language for loops and other logic. So all the code is written in all caps, except for what you want it to inject via like keyboard. And at the beginning of anything to note that it's ducky script, you put a Q. Um, and then some commands that you, so if you do Q, like command, it would be Q and then, yeah, command in all caps. And there are some payloads on the GitHub page and it's by hack five. I'll go to that at the end. So here are some more commands about the um, scripting language. So there's string delay and the function keys. So string and delay always come up for a capital Q string command is it types a string which you put inside of quotes um any string yeah the delay command is to input any delay and you use that in an in increment milliseconds and for function keys or a controller alt you put just the name of them in all caps i'll go to an example file real quick
Okay. So in the example, it has the attack mode at the beginning, some LEDs. Um, it shows the as a string, we use the string. It's just an example, I'll show it at the end. And it has some delays and enter. So the, on it, it has a little RGB LED, which is mainly used with troubleshooting and knowing where it is in the code. You can place different colors of patterns at different parts to troubleshoot, which is extremely handy when you are not good at code. And you see which parts run and which ones need to. Here's a little like key to the code. And there is the Bash Bunny wiki. Link to that is yeah i'll go to all the links at the end i have a little video example of what the led looks like when it's running a program so these are just patterns of leds that's it booting up video loads then it should blink magenta and then it does an attack pattern, which has yellow blinking lights. Yeah. So, and then there's some, I have some tricks that I've learned and things where I've messed up. I've learned that um, you have to name the payload payload or else it doesn't work and that caused much confusion. And hashtags is how you take notes. Um, and the repeat command is just a command I, you don't really use as much because it's not very practical because it just repeats the last command. It's much easier to just do a bash loop. So now I have some example scripts that I can share if it works. So here is one of them. It's the one we saw before. But if we run it, then we should see. So when we when it goes through, it should do the magenta lights, set up an attack mode, then do the yellow attack um, phase. So waits about the beginning for everything to get completely set opens up the menu at the top. It waits a few, like, few milliseconds, opens up mouse pad, enters it, and types in a string, you've been hacked, waits a bit, um, makes a new line, and this little loop, it repeats this four times. So it does a string, remember to lock your computer when you're away, presses enter, and then does that four times, and when it's done, it says thank you, waits for a second, and then resets the window to make it full screen. So if I plug this in, so booting up now, and a few seconds, we should see it turn magenta. It's magenta, can't see that. But, so it's opening up, it's a new file, and as you can see, it's typing really fast. And it's handy because some people just walk away and don't lock their computer because they think it's too much work to type in a password again. So it can be used to remind them. And so, yeah, that's one example. And then the other one, I have to open up real quick. So the second one 
it has the same source setup. It begins the attack. It also opens up the menu and opens up Google Chrome and types in a YouTube link. So and the purpose of this one, it's just fun, but it can be used too, as you can see. So it's booting up, then it's setting up attack mode. Now it's going into the actual attack and waits a few seconds for a Chrome to boot up. And then opens it up and Sorry, my video messed up there. Um, so I'll do that again. So yeah, the thing boots up, sets it up, starts the attack phase, and should work now. There we go. And it just brick rolls them. So, um, if I go back to the slides, so um, there's this real life example. I was going to go to it, but the link seems to not work. But it was about a penetration tester who used these in real life by they were hired to go into a prison and test their security and they just carried a bunch of these bash bunnies and they were all on the ethernet um mode and then they could wirelessly connect to all the computers that it is plugged into they're able to really yeah okay so any questions I'm, I'm looking, people are typing stuff. I don't, haven't seen anything pop up yet. There is uh there are some mad props to, uh, to doing a live demo, uh, even in the virtual space. I don't know if you know, but there's a, um, there's always a bit of, a, of, uh, antiness, uh, when you do a live demo in front of you might be feeling it. Um, but it's pretty awesome. Um, somebody, <laughs> Somebody wants to know, is this your first time speaking uh, at yeah. a conference or in public? Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a follow-up question. Have you ever tried doing CTFs? Um, tried once. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. <laughs> I feel like there's more of a story there. <laughs> um, have you been able to... Um, execute any uh, key commands or figure out a way to execute controls on a locked computer? Um, there is a way that I've seen before. I don't remember exactly how it does it, but it opens up like some terminal or something that sets into some mode using keyboard shortcuts. How did you get started in security and what made you um, sort of want to do this talk at KernelCon? Well, how did I? Um, I think I just found the website for this one time and saw like these and thought it was interesting. And then my dad, he works at a college and they there's like a hacking club, so they got money to buy all these things and then I decided to try them out and then found that they're pretty cool and just started messing around with them. Uh, very nice. Uh, so you've worked with sort of other Hack5 stuff or is the Bash Bunny sort of the first one you've been tinkering uh, with? Yeah, the Bash Bunny and Rubber Ducky are the first ones. Gotcha. Cool. Well, great talk. Uh, you can jump back into the Bad of Doom track. There are some other um, questions and some people chatting about stuff. Uh, for what it's worth, I think you did a great job and uh, look forward to see some, some novel research from you in the future. Yeah. All right, thanks, Anthony. All right. So we'll be back in the, uh, the Bad of Doom track here momentarily for uh, another short talk uh, from Mikey T.